So today we're going to be comparing SN2 and E2 and SN1 and E1. And we're going to be looking at the mechanisms and talking about how can we predict which one would be the favoured mechanism. So let's start with our SN1 and our E1. Okay, so if we have a look at SN1 and E1, you can see we've got the X group or the leaving group just up and leaving with the SN1. We've got a tertiary, tertiary carbon there. We've got the carbocation intermediate and then we've got the nucleophilic attack on that carbocation and we end up with our product here. So remember, this is a 50-50 mixture of our R and S stereo chemistry um, when that nucleophile attacks if that's a chiral carbon. With our E1, we firstly again have the X or leaving group leave. The base comes in, deprotonates that beta hydrogen, and then we get those electrons moving in and we get our double bond. So to work out which one's in preference between these two is quite difficult. And you can't actually do it unless you experimentally determine it. It's Theorise that if you have a higher temperature, then you're going to be forcing it towards that E1 mechanism, but you're still going to get a substantial amount of that SN1. And likewise, if you had no heat in the reaction, you'll possibly get more SN1 on that reaction. So what are we looking for here? We're looking at tertiary carbons, okay, in both of these. This one needs a beta hydrogen. If you have a tertiary carbon that doesn't have a beta hydrogen, you're going to get only SN1 because you won't be able to have that elimination reaction proceed. These occur both in protic solvents. The E1 is neutral or acidic conditions. And the SN1 are the ones that we've talked about that are on your extra sheet, so your list of reactions. Okay, so let's talk about SN2 and E2. Okay, so if we want to compare our SN2 and our E2. So our SN2, we have a small nucleophile that comes in and attacks the alpha carbon. We have a leaving group. This alpha carbon needs to be a primary one for this reaction to occur really fast. So our small nucleophile, our easily accessible carbon and our good leaving group. The nucleophile will come in from the opposite side and the leaving group will come out the other side. So we've got what we call a backside attack. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have the nucleophile coming in and the other leaving group leaving at the same time. So this nucleophile will have an inversion of the stereochemistry if that's a chiral carbon. Okay, so if we started off with R and we ended up with S, if we start off with S, we'd end up with R, so an inversion of that stereochemistry. Comparing that to our E2, our E2 again needs to have that strong bulky base to deprotonate and then we have the uh, bonding electrons to that hydrogen going in and making that double bond and our leaving group coming um, out at the same time. So it's got that transition state again and then we get our product there. So strong bulky base, aprotic solvent and small nucleophile primary carbon and again aprotic solvent. So remember aprotic solvent shield, it does not shield the nucleophile. Okay, a protic solvent solvates the nucleophile. So it's protic, so it's positively charged, it solvates that negatively charged nucleophile and it stops it from being able to do what it needs to do. So for these SN2s and E2s, we really need a solvent that doesn't hinder the nucleophile or the base doing what it needs to do. In comparison to the SN1 and E1, a protic solvent is fine. A protic solvent is more favoured. Okay, so hopefully that helps you with practising your questions for SN1 
E1, SN2 and E2 elimination. Thank you.